In one of the more ironic disasters of all time, the Unit 4 reactor of the Chernobyl power plant in Ukraine failed during an emergency shutdown safety test in 1986, belching nuclear waste and radioactive isotopes all over the nearby city of Pripyat. More than 30 years later, hundreds of stray dogs live in and around the power plant, along with the many wild animals that call Chernobyl home. Today on Weird History, we're talking about the dogs of Chernobyl. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know what weird historical topic you'd like to hear about. So, prep your tissues, animal lovers. We're going to Ukraine. In April 1986, the Soviet Union evacuated the area surrounding Chernobyl and its 120,000 citizens and established the Exclusion Zone, a kind of no-man's land covering 1,000 square miles. That's a massive area, roughly the size of Yosemite National Park. The fleeing civilians had to leave behind everything, including their pets who, like the heroic first responders to the disaster, would suffer the catastrophic effects of the spreading radiation. Unlike a nuclear bomb, a reactor's radiation just keeps on coming. 48 seconds of exposure to the area was lethal to the first humans to re-enter it, even in lead-lined protective gear. So the fact that they literally shoved those animals who followed their fleeing owners off the bus and left them for dead is only shocking if you don't consider how much the risk of radiation contamination rises with every warm body you stuff in a steel box car. It gets worse, though. Plenty of pet owners left notes on their doors pleading with the government's contamination squads to spare the animals inside. You can probably guess how that went. But life finds a way, life breaks free, and life expands to new territories. Painfully, perhaps even dangerously, some of those pets managed to outlast radiation and the freezing weather. Did we mention that Ukraine is cold? Like, ice in the toilet every morning cold. The average winters in most of the country stay well below freezing. Even if you have a nice furry coat physically attached to your skin, it's still a hard environment to survive in. No person, or dog for that matter, should want to live there. About 3,500 generational cleanup workers continue to make the exclusion zone inclusive. SPCA International reports that about a thousand dogs are living in and around the disaster site, many of them driven out of the woods by wolves. Yes, wolves. Yet another fun feature of living there. Even now, the workers aren't allowed to take the dogs home with them, but they do their best to feed and care for them while they're there. That's where animal organizations like Four Paws and Clean Futures Fund come in. They joined forces to help the dogs of Chernobyl. Together, these philanthropists work to spay, neuter, and vaccinate the dogs, curbing the spread of disease. You can actually open your home to these animals. SPCA International and Clean Futures Fund have been working together to make this happen. In 2018, Ukrainian authorities and the CFF cleared over 200 dogs for adoption in both Ukraine and the United States. Dogs under one year old are sent to nearby Slavyatek for a 45-day quarantine, after which they can find forever homes instead of starving and freezing in a man-made hellscape. If you're hoping for an irradiated dog with superpowers, you're going to be pretty disappointed. USC's resident Chernobyl biologist Tim Mousseau had this to say. Most of them do not seem to be radioactive. That was a bit of a surprise. We saw absolutely no dogs with two heads or any major genetic abnormalities. More than 450 animals were tested for radiation exposure, received medical care, vaccinations, and were spayed or neutered. In a surprising twist, the radiation testing revealed that the dogs living in the zone were not harmfully contaminated. Even those unfortunate animals that do have mutations, like those dog-eating wolves we talked about earlier, are unlikely to start solving or committing crimes. No tentacles, no acid breath, just albinism and cat racks. One area where the dogs do seem adversely affected are their lifespans. Dogs from the area only live for about four years. The disaster crews do what they can, but without a real home, there's nothing to keep these dogs from dying of malnutrition, predators, disease, and the bitterly cold winters.
The underdogs of Chernobyl have survived removal attempts by authorities for over 30 years. As we mentioned before, the Soviets immediately moved in to cull the dogs in 1986 when the disaster occurred. But the exclusion zone is a massive area, and Ukraine is one of the poorest countries on Earth. And someone had to pay for soldiers and bullets. Eventually, the Soviets pulled out and the plan ran out of money, so they tried to pay a worker to do some more culling of the animals. According to the CFF, the Clean Futures Fund, that worker turned down the job. Culling a thousand dogs is an awful lot to ask of anyone, whatever the price. One of the best things the CFF have done, besides giving dogs medical care and hopefully homes, has been to place collars on certain dogs to gauge the radiation levels wherever they may roam. We've spent a lot of time talking up the dogs, but you don't want to pet them unless they're in your house or in a shelter. If you're visiting Chernobyl, yes, you can visit for whatever reason, and yes, people do it, you should never ever touch a dog that hasn't been decontaminated. This should go without saying, but any good human being knows how hard it is to resist petting a dog. Since these dogs grew up in the exclusion zone, they don't come without their quirks. Here's what you need to know. The dogs don't understand the concept of a toy. The only things they enjoy playing with are sticks and anything they can eat. The CFF developed a training program for Chernobyl puppies while they are in the adoption shelter, but they will likely still need a little extra care and attention to reach their full potential. All these pups ask is a little of our patience, time, and love, and they will give that love back in spades because, well, they're dogs. It's what they do. Man's best friend has to be able to deal with man's worst accidents, and the dogs of Chernobyl have had to suffer it for generations. It's not much to ask any of us to do our part to make it suck just a little bit less by giving what we can, when we can, how we can. What do you think about the dogs of Chernobyl? Would you ever adopt one? Let us know in the comments, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos of our weird history.